As a supervising driver, it's your job to help the learner practice a range of driving skills step by step and to give constructive feedback. Learners can't do it without you. When they first get behind the wheel, they're like kids with a new toy. It's your job as a parent to say, mate, I know you're excited about driving, but can you just watch the road? It's your job to look out for them. Uh, there's definitely a planning role involved, uh, knowing in advance where you're going. In the early stages, she was completely preoccupied with the dashboard and controls, and uh, so she couldn't concentrate on those things and uh, look out for a hazard, so I made sure I looked out for them. Learning to drive is like learning any other new skill. Everyone learns differently and at a different pace. That's why a staged approach is recommended with as much practice as possible in a broad range of road, traffic and weather conditions as skills improve. Before we tried something new, we'd have a look at the checklist in the learner's kit. If we thought he could handle it, we'd drive somewhere we hadn't been or move on to the next stage. As the learner kit explains, learners should start with simple driving tasks in quiet locations and then gradually move on to more complex tasks in different conditions. Vic Rhodes recommends dividing the learner period into four stages, which I'll talk about later on. I didn't realise until I started supervising my children that driving is a subtle art. There are the basic skills of controlling the car, of course, and then there are mental abilities, like spotting dangers up ahead, and it took Lou a long time to develop those abilities. Yeah, a few times Dad had a go at me while I was driving, and I wanted to answer back, but I couldn't because I had to concentrate on the road, and that really got to me. Um, so if you've got something to say, say it nicely, or say it after the session. Okay, I can answer this one. Um, if you're a parent, calm down. <laughs> it's so much easier to learn without somebody yelling at you from the passenger seat. Like the few times mum's yelled at me, I, I totally freaked out. These kids, they get behind the wheel and think they'll be driving to Byron 20 minutes later. They don't realise how long it takes to learn to drive. You've got to keep telling them, be patient. Learning to drive is a long process. I see so many parents who think they have to be driving instructors. My advice for parents is to think of your role as being more like a coach. Supervising a learner is like teaching someone a new sport. You gradually build the foundations, track their progress, set up practice sessions that get more challenging and give feedback. It's a partnership between parent and learner. Mum and I talked about everything, like what I did right, what I did wrong and where I could improve, road rules, all that stuff. If we didn't get on, it would have been so much harder. Keep in mind that some people find professional lessons helpful, but they are never a replacement for practice and experience. An instructor can make suggestions about things to practice and can help your learner when they start driving in new driving situations. There are no rules about how many professional lessons are best. It's different for every learner. If you do decide to use a professional driving instructor, make sure that you shop around to find one that you and your learner can get along with. Once mum yelled at me, brake, brake. Because of the way she said it, I totally freaked out and put my foot on the accelerator. Nothing bad happened, but still, she shouldn't have yelled. It made things worse. It was so scary, but it was okay. Uh, we just uh, pulled over for a couple of minutes and let everything just calm down. We agreed that we wouldn't raise our voices in the car. And I learned it was okay to just pull over for a couple of minutes, and let everything calm down. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so much harder to to keep on driving after something's gone wrong or you've made a mistake. So we just pulled over for a couple of minutes whenever we got stressed out. Well, uh, get a bit defensive about the driving, I reckon. Tim did get a bit touchy about his hill starts. The clutch in his car's no good. Mum's car's easier. I'm a perfectionist. I'm very particular about the way I do things. So that was a source of tension between us early on. But the way I, I resolved it was through positive thinking. Instead of thinking, what a silly mistake, I'd think, yes, it is a silly mistake, but I guess that's the way people learn. The hardest thing is stopping yourself from getting worked up. You have to control your own nerves and just think about the way you're telling them things. I'm a quick learner, but at the start, I couldn't even drive around the car park. It's funny, you know, he surfs and skates and plays footy, but first on behind the wheel, he had trouble doing the most simple things. Yeah, I was unco. It took me ages to get the hang of driving. I thought it would be easy as, but... Once he got the basics down, though, he loved it wanted to drive everywhere and after a few months he did start to lose interest. Yeah I got bored. It was too much like school and I just got sick of all that practice. 
Then about four months before his 18th, he got into it again, wanted to drive everywhere. I reckon he could see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm, I'm glad we kept at him driving, even when he didn't want to, because if we hadn't, I don't think he would have been ready. Expect a few tears as normal. Jackie and I, we had a bit of an issue. Well, first time we went out on the freeway, it was pretty quiet when we got home for a while, but we talked about it and we sorted it out. The learner period is divided into four stages. Stage one focuses on controlling the car. Stage two focuses on driving on quiet streets. Stage three is all about driving in more complex situations. And stage four is when the learner is rehearsing for when they will be a solo driver. You are still there to supervise and help, but they will be making most of the decisions. The checklists in the learner kit help learners and parents work in partnership to track progress through these stages. The stages and checklists are really important. Like, you, ha you just have to remember that it's okay to go back and practice something if you're not sure about it. Like, you can forget pretty easily, so you, ha you have to keep your skills up. Remember these key points. There are four stages to learning to drive. Supervising drivers play a crucial role in helping learners develop safe driving skills, and learning to drive is a partnership. You should think of yourself as a driving coach, not an instructor. It's okay if motivation changes throughout the learning period. Strong emotions are part of the process, and it's important for everyone to stay calm. And if you think it could be unsafe, pull over.